And welcome to Dakota Housing Network. I'm your host for this week, Greg Larson. And with me on the boards is Jim Walsh. And Jim can't talk because he doesn't have a microphone right now. But Jim, Dave Floor, wherever he is, made a mistake. Uh-oh. I'm just telling you, he made a mistake. Why? Joe she Well, because look who's here. Joe Please. Sheehan, yes. Joe Sheehan is out in the mortgage mobile seeking a low mortgage. Mm -hmm. And Brian Ritter is hiding in his office. And I'm here with the leadership team of the Bismarck Mandan Board of Realtors. Current President Kristen Oban, uh, President-elect Amy Hullett. I got that right, didn't I? You did. And uh, Vice President Tricia Schlosser. And we're going to talk about all things local realty. And I got to tell you, today, this studio looks a lot better than it did last week. So welcome, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And Dave, eat your heart out. So let's start uh, just a little bit. We'll go to some national statistics. We're going to look at some mortgage rates. Um, we get these from Freddie Mac. The average rate today for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage in the Midwest is 3.76%. It's exactly what it was a week ago. And uh, as we talk about this, given we're going into an election year, given uh, the Chinese market and uh, their economic situation, it doesn't look like interest rates are going to move for a while. So that's what we can look at now. Uh, a 15-year fixed, a fixed rate is 2.98. A uh, adjustable rate is 2.89. So what do you think? Is that a good deal for folks buying a house? Absolutely. It's always the best time to buy. Always the best time. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Um, we're looking at a chart just takes the whole trend and, and we're looking from October 30th all the way last year into this year and um, October 30th last year interest rates were at four four percent so we're really real real steady real static then we're going to talk just a bit about a um, couple of national uh, things that we look at the National Association of Realtors just put out a report and they talk about pending home sales, losing further steam in September. One of the things that they do to mark the economy of, of real estate is pending, the pending home sales index. That was started in 2001 at an index of 100. And then they rate the affordability of homes based on that 100. The higher above 100 you get, the better it is. If you go below, that's not good. And that's all based on 2001. Currently, the pending home sales index is off slightly nationwide. Um, according to Lawrence Yoon, Dr. Lawrence Yoon, NAR chief economist, he says there continues to be a dearth of available listings in the lower end of the market for the first time buyers and realtors in many areas are reporting stronger competition than what's normal this time of year because of stubbornly low inventory conditions. Additionally, the rockiness in the financial markets at the end of the summer and signs of a slowing U.S. economy may be causing some prospective buyers to take a wait-and-see approach. He does say that the housing market is still likely to be one of the brighter spots in the economy uh, based on what we just talked about, interest rates hovering around 4%, rents rising at a uh, near eight-year high and job growth holding strong, albeit at a more modest pace than earlier this year. The overall demand for housing should stay at a healthy level despite some weaknesses in the overall economy. So that's pretty good news. And for the Midwest, the uh, pending home sales index is actually uh, fairly stable. It has not dipped like it has nationally. We also have another statistic that we talk about called the National Housing Affordability Index. And that's based on um, a standard again of 100. If you're 100 or above, your affordability indexes are good. If they're over 100, um, they're even better, a little lower, not so good. So what the affordability housing index is, they take the average income and compare it to the average price of a house, and then they also put it against the interest rate that is standard. And uh, just to give you an idea, don't move to California, folks. Don't move, don't go to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. The overall in June um, affordability index was 1.48, or excuse me, 
154.0. So it's above 100, and that's a fixed rate, so that's good. In August, it was 156.7, so it's increased. If you're on the West Coast, folks, your average home price is $325,000. Your interest rate is 4.16. Your payment is 12.63. That's just principal and, and uh, interest. As a percent of your income, it's 21.3% because your average income is 71,000 and your qualifying income is 60,000. That gives you a fixed um, housing affordability index of 114. Northwest is a little east is a little better. Let's talk Midwest, that's us. Median priced existing family home, and this isn't too far from locally, is 182,000. Interest rate is 4.18. The uh, monthly principal and interest is $711. The uh, payment is 12.6% of your income. Your average income is 67,000, so your qualifying income is 34,128 which means you have a fixed rate affordability uh, index of 192.7. So this is the place to buy a house. And they are affordable, according to these statistics. So, should we talk state? Sure. Sure, why not? for that. Yeah. <laughs> state of North Dakota. And I have the wrong sheet of paper. I'll find it here in a minute. Give me a minute. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, I hear that two-minute deal. Yeah, I, okay. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that, no, I'm just hoping you stall for time there. Well, it ain't working. I can't find it. So let me just tell you. Here we go. The uh, In North Dakota, year-to-date, average sales price is up 4.4% from a year ago, 13.2% from two years ago. Median price is up 6.4%, and from two years ago, 16.2%, and the average sold to list price is 98%. Listings in the state are slightly down from a year ago at close to 2%. So there you go. The state is steady. It's increasing. And when we uh, are going to get back, we'll talk a little bit about Bismarck, and then we're going to talk about some of the fun stuff we've got going on. So we just had Halloween. Did you get anything fun? Did you go trick-or-treating, ladies? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it helps when you have kids. They give you candy, too. Yep. All right, we will be back. Right now, 37. Super Talk 1270. Listen to high school sports action and live Bobcats hockey online at supertalk1270.com. We are back. Welcome to the Dakota Housing Network. We're listening to the kinks. They're tired of waiting for me to get onto this mic. Let's talk, ladies, just a, bit, a little bit about the local market. Um, we've seen some folks say that this market is going a little south. We're seeing that people are saying that the, the market is vastly different. Uh, we'll start with you, Kristen. Uh, what do you think? I definitely think we're looking at a bit of a shift here back into a little bit of a buyer's market. We have more in the market than we've seen in the last few years. Our marketing times are longer. We're looking at a lot of 60-day marketing times rather than a week. So there are definitely options for buyers. Interest rates are still great. So we are definitely seeing a shift in the market. Buyers are being more patient. They've got a lot to choose from. Okay, that, I agree with that. Um, what kind of a market are we looking at? You, we were talking about this on the break, and Trisha, you said something about what you think the market is? Actually, the market is healthier. Believe it or not, sellers may not feel that. However, I compare it to, a little bit to the, when we talk about the oil. We're so used to going 120 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone and now we're still going 90 but it feels a lot slower mm -hmm. so we're getting back to what it was probably about five years ago this and we're still on a national level our days on market is still very low it's just not what we're used to this is i think we're coming into a new normal yeah thank you for that and um one of the other things we're looking at when we look at the statistics is you know overall uh, compared to last year, we are off on numbers of units sold, but our prices are up. Our days on the market are slightly up. 
Uh, our prices are holding. We're getting what people are listing them for when they list them reasonably. And so I, I think you're right. Um, we are in a changing market. And, and uh, Amy, we're going to have to adapt to that as realtors. What do you? What kind of things are you looking at to be doing? You know, I think, um, I don't want to say old school, but I think you're going to have to work a little harder to get your houses sold and make sure that you as an agent um, sit down with your sellers and prepare them for the new market. Um, when you look at um, what all we have going on, pricing a property correctly right now is vital. There is no room for give negotiations here and there. Um, I think it's it's better to get it out there and get it priced right. Um, I think you're better there. The other thing that I tell my sellers right now is they're like, oh gosh, I don't know what to do. I'll hold off till spring. You know what? If your house isn't on the market, it's not on the market and you could miss out this fall or this winter season. Um, for somebody who's moving into town, things like that, I do still encourage my sellers to keep their house on the market right now, even through the holidays, um, because that buyer is out there. There's one for every house. We just got to find them. Yeah, that's true. We talk about a slow market. Uh, they, we talk about, you know, the, the winter, the holiday season being a slow market. That means that only like $60 million worth of real estate will be bought and sold in the month of December. It's not like the market stops. And so right. we need to remember that. So this uh, year, uh, the national president of the National Association of Realtors, Chris Polycron, is from Arkansas. Early uh, or late last year, actually, there was a realtor who was stalked and kidnapped and murdered in Arkansas. And so he made this the year of safety and we jumped on that in North Dakota, and our mandatory training this year was safety. So ladies, wonder, whoever wants to jump in, we just want to talk about what kind of things we've learned about r risks to realtors, and really, in particular, uh, to female realtors. And there are more fem female realtors than, than men realtors, so you know it's a universal thing. Plus, as I get older, I need to be more concerned about it, too. I can't kick anybody's butt anymore. You're, you need to be more concerned about the ice on the sidewalk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, this safety is not an issue that's new, but it's just really coming to the forefront and our national news. You're hearing more and more about it. Um, we, ha Like I said, this isn't new. There have been incidents even within our community and within our realtor community, we're pretty good about telling each other if there is an incident or if there is somebody who's texting um, or soliciting uh, realtors and trying to get them to vacant houses, that, that news gets out pretty quickly. Uh, it isn't just realtors who need that safety awareness. It's really sellers. Uh, sellers, you know, coaching sellers when you are listing a house and telling them to put away all their firearms or any weapons that they have, their valuables, their cash, their um, prescription drugs is huge. Uh, making sure that they put all of those things away uh, because we don't, even though people are coming in the home with realtors, especially in an open house, you're not always aware of what those people are doing. And you may have somebody who targets that and they're very skilled at um, finding what they are looking for. So it's just things to be aware of as a seller. Um, and that goes for, um, and I know Kristen can kind of speak to this a little bit about sellers <coughs> letting people into their homes um, without a realtor being present. Yes, that can happen when, uh, and I talk to my sellers about if they are outside um, doing yard work and somebody comes by and says, hey, can I come and take a look at your house? I see it's for sale. Uh, absolutely don't do that. Make sure that they're contacting the realtor, I tell my sellers, make sure that you're giving them my contact number. They can call me to schedule an appointment. You absolutely don't want somebody you don't know just to come in and take a look around. If you're having a garage sale or something like that, it's just not a good idea to let somebody that you don't know um, come in and take a look around. You don't know if they're really serious and we can screen them and see if they are really serious. If they are serious, they'll give us a call and we'll make a scheduled appointment. Yeah, more times than not, one of the things that uh, we do encourage our sellers to understand is that when a real estate agent brings somebody through their home that they've either been to the bank, they've, you know, they're qualified to buy a house, they're really looking, somebody who's just doing a drive-by, you know, we, we don't know who they are um, and as far as that goes. And, and I, I do really encourage real estate agents to um, take care of themselves as they're out there meeting new clients in, in new locations. Think about your own protection and your own safety out there. Um, 
just a plug for for you guys to to watch what you're doing and just going back to the realtor safety piece of it so uh, there's a we've been through safety training and and both um you know in like a classroom setting as well as physically learning how to protect ourselves so don't mess with these guys <laughs> Um, and one of the things is if there's some, some way that you want to be able to protect yourself, whether it's mace or a firearm or whatever it might be, just make sure that you are um, comfortable using that or it could be used against you. And the other thing, and this could go for anybody, is a two-second rule. You know, every time you go up to, especially with us going to some, meet with somebody we don't know, meet in an area we don't know, we haven't been to the house, as you're driving up, make sure that you take two seconds and take, you know, look around the neighborhood and see what you see as you get out of the car. Uh, again, look around the house, see if there's anything unusual or um, anything that you need to take note of. If you're walking up to the house, you're making, making sure that um, you are just aware of your surroundings. And that's the biggest thing is be aware and be constantly aware. And that, again, goes for anybody. If you're out at the mall at night, it's darker earlier. Just make sure you're aware. If you're walking to your car, is there a van next to your driver's side? Um, maybe you want to go in into the passenger side or maybe even go back in and ask somebody to walk you out. So safety is so, so important. We've got a growing community and, and a lot of things come along with that. So just be aware. Yep. I think one of the big distractions, don't you guys think, is, is uh, cell phones. You know, Absolutely. When you're walking into a park lot, parking lot, don't just have your face down texting. You're just advertising that you know something could happen. And that was one of the big things um, in one of our training session is that is exactly true, that people are ta being targeted because they're not paying attention. As soon as you make eye contact with somebody, you're less of a, of a target. So make sure, again, be aware and get off that cell phone. For sure. Just the other week, a guy was walking down uh, the street in uh, Bismarck going to a title company, and he was texting and walked into a parking sign. But I didn't hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> True story. I wish I had that on video. <laughs> yeah, don't you oh, wish. Yes. Okay, we, you know, we talked about some things that the, the homeowners should know. Whether you're selling your home by yourself, whether you're doing it with, through a realtor, um, you need to be aware that there might be people who are shopping your belongings. Mm -hmm. You know, like we talked about, they come to a, a garage sale and all of a sudden they want to look at the house. But anytime you have someone who wants to look at your house, you have it for sale, be aware that there may be someone who wants your prescriptions. There may be someone who wants your uh, hunting equipment or firearms or your good china or any of that. So you want to make sure that that's, oh, you don't have any good china? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Just note to you folks, if you ever go to Amy's house, you're not going to be eating off the fine china. <laughs> if it doesn't go in the dishwasher, it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is protect your belongings uh, because they can, you know, that can be an issue. Mm -hmm. So the other thing we want to talk about is kids in an open house. When, when folks have kids coming in, uh, we as realtors sometimes we get called rude because we try to corral the kids and keep them in place but that's the protection for the seller and, and it's the same thing you know we, we just need to plus safety i when i first got in this business uh, i had a family and the kids took off and one little kid rolled down the steps i mean he was maybe three it didn't hurt himself but i thought man what would have happened if he had and mm -hmm. so we just there's so many things we need to take care of with that so um is there anything about on safety, realtor safety, anything we want to talk about? We're, we're good with that. Okay. You ready for a fun fact? This just killed me today. It really did. Yes. Every day, I, I always look up what happened today. So November 5th, right? November 5th, in 1775, General George Washington forbade his troops from celebrating Guy Fox Day. And excuse me, but what is, I'm going to ask, what Fox is Day. Guy ready? Fox you ready? Day? Yes. Guy Fox Day is a British, was a British anti-Catholic holiday. Okay. At the time, Washington was trying to get aid from the predominantly Catholic country of France mm -hmm. and from French Canada, so he forbade these guys from having, uh, celebrating Guy Fox Night, actually it's. So, Makes sense. what do you suppose happened in 1605 on November 5th? Were you born that day? No. <laughs> Guy Fox was arrested trying to blow up the Protestant 
Parliament in England. <laughs> King James got it, so that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so are you turning music up because it's time to go away? So we'll go away and we'll be back. Thank you. Right now, 37. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. Because he gets up in the morning and he goes to work at night. And welcome back to the Dakota Housing Network. I'm your host, Greg Larson. I'm here with Kristen Oban, Trisha Schlosser, and Amy Hullett, the leadership team for the Bismarck Mandan Board of Realtors. During the break, we were talking about a few things. One of them, interestingly enough, is that... Uh, well, I don't know what it was now that I think about it. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> that, on, was this that day, <laughs> on this day in 1977, we want to wish happy anniversary to George W. and Laura Bush. Today is their anniversary. Happy Got married anniversary. in 1977. And uh, one of the things that's happening in the National Association of Realtors is they look out for stuff that is impacting the industry. They look out for things that are, are uh, causing problems. And one of the things we've talked about on this show before is called patent trolling. What that is, is uh, lawyers uh, or other folks go out and search old patents that are registered and then they find them by the patent and then try to make folks pay them a fee for using their patent. Now, in some cases, this is a good thing. People do steal patents and use them. In other cases, it gets rather silly. Uh, for instance, uh, we have some folks I was talking to in Bismarck. These patent trolls found a small pop-up program that was patented. They bought it, and they go after folks who can't afford to fight them. One of them they went after here in Bismarck is a fantasy football league. Mm -hmm. And they went after because their pop-up, they claimed, was their patent. Well, this is a fantasy football league. They didn't have a chance to fight it, so they paid the fees, and the fantasy football league went down. Well, they're targeting realtors and real estate brokers more than that for some of the things they have on their websites and pop-ups and that sort of thing. So we're trying to say, let's be reasonable about this. And actually, our own Congressman Kevin Kramer is one of the leads in trying to get that done. So patent trolls, is that a new deal, ladies? I mean, everyone says that's a new thing, patent trolls. Well, you're wrong. And they're all nodding their heads up and down. In 1895, in 1895, George Selden, an attorney from Rochester, New York, patented the gas-powered motor carriage. Patented it. He patented the idea. He never built one, he never designed one, he never owned one, he never drove in one, but he read about it. So he patented the motor-powered carriage. Brilliant. So we've been doing this for a long time. All right, so ladies, we, there's a lot of stuff going on in Bismarck Mandan in the leadership team. We're going into leadership training. We're doing a lot of planning. Kristen, you're kind of at the end of your term. I am. You're, and she's smiling, <laughs> cheering, jumping up and down. And Amy, you're just coming into yours. And my heart just started pulsating. <laughs> <laughs> and Tricia, you're uh, in the position of watching what these guys do and beginning to plan yours. So we had a busy year, Kristen. Some of the big stuff we did were... We did. We did. One of the biggest things was coming down from NAR is they... Um, is the core standards. Basically, NAR put in these core standards. Um, they are basically saying if you want to be a member of the National Association of Realtors, you must meet these minimum standards. So it's about raising the bar for our profession. So any, every association that is a part of NAR had to put these core standards into place. And there were six areas of the core standards. Um, one of them is consumer outreach, and we we do a fantastic job in our association. We've got an awesome association. We had to. Uh, the biggest thing about this is we're very involved in our in our community, trying to get the um, the word out, the using realtors and things like that. But just being out there for the public and doing the things that we do, and I think that was the biggest thing about 
um, and we're, I think we're going to be talking about some of the things we do in the community, but the biggest thing is um, saying here we're out here doing this, so just talking about that. Um, code of ethics is another one, um, you know, subscribing to a code of ethics and being professional. Um, so that was a big, huge focus this year, and we, we had to change a few things in our association, but really we have always been very good at, at all of the things that were put into place this year, so we just didn't have to change a lot. It wasn't a huge jump for us to, to change that. Um, so, okay, we did the core standards. That was a big deal, but nothing else stopped. Everything else went on, right? I mean, Absolutely. We still bought and sold homes. We handled those transactions. We did a lot of education. Uh, we did pro standards. We, you know, one of the things, folks, and, and you guys can talk about this more than I can. We are an industry that is unique in that we police ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who asked for oversight from the state legislature. We are the ones who asked for changes, pretty much, for the Century Code. We are the ones that want to continue education, and so that is a continuing thing that we do: is trying to keep realtors uh, on the straight and narrow not that we want to catch them uh, we have more of an attitude we want to help them meet these standards and that goes on as well and we had a bunch of education this year what do you think um, again Kristen this year what was the, the the thing that really sticks out to besides course standards have you got any one thing I got one if you don't. But <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that sticks out is that we already talked about it was the safety. So that's yep. been a huge thing. So, you know, along with that core standards um, and the professionalism that came along with that, that was the other big thing that stuck out to me this year was the safety. What are you thinking? Well, actually, I was thinking that, uh, uh, as you guys know, I was the local president years ago. And as I look at what things were like then and I look at what things are like now, uh, the professionalism mm -hmm. of the board, of the of the management, not just our, our paid staff who are really great, but just the professionalism of the board mm -hmm. and, and the way things move forward. And I'm seeing uh, a much more interest in long-range planning, looking down the road a lot, mm -hmm. so that we're not planning for just my year, but years out. And so I, I think that's one good thing I've seen really develop this year, so kudos to you. Well, we had so many volunteers. We have different committees that are a part of our association. We've got the board of directors, and then we've got several other committees. We had more volunteers this year than I think I've ever seen. We There were some committees where we had to change the place of where we have the meetings because we couldn't fit them in the room that we normally have them in. So that was just absolutely wonderful that we had that much participation. And it is about keeping our associ association operating professionally um, they did a fantastic job this year. Yes, they did. And, and uh, one of the nice things that's going to happen is, is of course, uh, we just had some management training where they said, once you're no longer president, you're a dead president. <laughs> but, uh, we I got about 22 days. 22 days and you're a dead president. <laughs> but we, we keep the past president involved, and, and that's good. So we have that, you know, a, a continuity of things going on. And so you're not done. I'm not done. No, it's actually a four-year commitment. Yep, so I've got is. about a year and 22 days. <laughs> that's right. Which means, Amy, in 22 days... I don't know if that's accurate, actually. Your stuff's <laughs> going to hit the fan. Uh, you know, getting ready for this position, um, I've, I've had and watched great leaders uh, lead us in the right direction. Kristen's been a, a great inspiration uh, to watch uh, going through the course standards. Uh, now it just gives us guidelines to, to continue to um, live by as far as realtors go. One of the things that uh, she talks about is the fact that um, it only made us a better organization, a better association, and better realtors. Um, and the overwhelming um, set of volunteers that she was talking about is in education. We are extremely proud of the education that we offer our realtors. And recently, um, we just did some designation classes, which actually takes our realtors above and beyond um, the standard education that's offered. Um, we have designations that we can earn that teach us um, to be certified in certain things, whether it's working with uh, seniors and that whole transition, or whether it's actually taking first time home buyers and working them. Um, also, just real estate agents in general treating their 
um, what they do as a business has been another big factor that we're trying to get them to understand. And so anyway, we're very excited about moving forward um, with the leadership. Again, it's not going to be just a one-year plan. We're looking to the next five years, a lot of new real estate agents, a lot of new technology coming down the pipes. Again, exciting, fun, but again, making sure that we're doing this in 10 years and not just one year at a time. And Amy, you've already started, really. You've had some roundtables going on. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm very excited about what new real estate agents are perceiving as far as our association, what they expect from us, what they would love to see from us. And and so I can't help them with their business until they kind of tell me what they need. Um, and so that we as an association can provide for the real estate agents that are out there. And so, yeah, I have been meeting with um, three years or newer realtors in the last couple of weeks and finding out a interesting amount of information. And I'm excited to bring it forward and go from there. That sounds good. And as we go to our next break, I just want you to know that in this day in 1994, George Foreman, that was before he invented, what's that word? Invented Invented. the George Foreman grill grill thing. Yeah. November 5th, 1994, he became the oldest heavyweight boxing champion in history at 39. Talk to you at the break. Currently, it's 37. On the web, on the go, everywhere. Supertalk1270.com. And welcome back to the Dakota Housing Network. I'm Greg Larson, your host today, and I'm here with the Bismarck Mandan Board of Realtors leadership team, Amy Hullett, Tricia Schlosser, and Kristen Oban, and eat your heart out, Dave Fleur. Hi. So, uh, just so you know, today, October, November 5th, FDR was elected president, and Richard Nixon was elected president, and Woodrow Wilson was elected president. And probably not his best day, back in 1862, General George McLean was fired as the head of the infantry by Abraham Lincoln because he refused to engage Robert E. Lee. He didn't want to fight Robert E. Lee because they were friends. So. He had it coming, sorry. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. A little side note. Let me see. If, if you're a general and you're in charge of the Army and you don't want to go attack your friend, you're probably going to lose your job. He's a paper general. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so one of the things we, we want to talk about, we want to spend this next segment talking about it really is, you know, as realtors, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. There's a lot of, of charities that are sponsored. Uh, I can't think of an agency that doesn't do these things plus it's also just in our culture we have national charities that we support one of the big national charities is chris is easter seals that nar supports and some others in the state we have selected a couple that are kind of interesting one of them is called taps taps is a program that we sponsor and what it does is is we raise funds to pay for the costs of a mentor uh, who is a former serviceman uh military person to mentor a child who's lost or has a a parent uh, in the military or has one who has been severely injured and so what we do is we try to raise money to provide the the costs for the mentor to get trained and then help them find and and work with their kids and um, we've just been into it two years but I think we have now funded four mentors so we're moving on we're really proud of that Nice. Another thing we do is called Spare Key, and this is another thing we do as a fundraiser. And you guys all know what Spare Key is. It's it's tied to hospitals or it's tied to, to folks who have uh, sick kids or a medical issue. And uh, with all those expenses and because they're having loss of income because they're spending so much time with their kids at the hospital or something, Spare P- Key comes in and picks up their house payment for a period of time <coughs> so that we can keep them in their house and keep their family home. So those are some of the uh, uh, state ones we do. There's a ton of them we do locally, and we're going to talk about another state one that was started here, and and, uh, we'll jump on that. But just let's talk about a couple of things that we do just citywide as Bismarck Mandan Board of Realtors. What what other things do we do here? For instance, United Way. Yep. 
Um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about this. About uh, two years ago, we decided to uh, develop a REACT committee, which is real estate agents and affiliates um, giving back to the community. Um, Are you involved with that at all? Maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I chair that committee. Greg, thanks, thanks. Anyway, um, we picked three different things that uh, we're going to do as uh, an association throughout the year. Uh, the first one that we start off with in April is the Backpack for Kids. Uh, we've been doing that for two years. It's been an overwhelming um, response of giving. I am so pleased with the affiliates and the agents that have given to that. This last year, we we uh, were able to do 25,000 units of food to the Backpack for Kids program. That is amazing. The other thing that I guess amazes me is how many of the kids actually go home with those per se backpacks full of food. Um, it was 471 this last year, and that's on a weekly basis. So again, an overwhelming amount of kids that benefited from um, us just having a, a great time uh, raising funds to give them food. It was, and we, we made a game out of it. It was, of course, competition, not a problem. We do it all the time. Um, the other thing that we did was uh, Day of Caring, and that is done um, on one day of the year. That's done through United Way, and we actually pick a location and get volunteers uh, for that. And um, we probably get a good 40-some volunteers from our organization to give back to that um, on that one day. And that is that is another thing that is so overwhelming that is um, this, the community gives back as well. We love to be a part of that. Um, it's it's amazing what happens in a community this size when you have great volunteers. And then the last one um, is Realtor Ring Day, which is actually coming up here yep. December 4th. So that day, um, that's also kind of a state thing, and I'll let Greg talk about that a little bit later But after I get done here. But we look for... Um, 85 volunteers that one day to ring a bell. Every every bell will be rung by a realtor um, or a realtor and an affiliate, which is very awesome that we, again, come together and work so well together. Um, and we have 13 to 15 locations between the city of Bismarck and Mandan. And last year we raised almost $10,000 in one day to give to Salvation Army by ringing the bell. So it was an exciting day. Yes. Now, okay. what are the numbers statewide, Greg? Uh, last year, Realtor Ring Day in North Dakota raised almost $60,000. Uh, yeah. This is a kind of a neat deal. This was started in, in the state of North Dakota. Actually, it was at a, a leadership meeting. People were talking about we should figure out a charity, and somebody said, we should maybe do something with Salvation Army. A couple of folks in Fargo said, mm -hmm. well, let's do a Realtor Ring Day, and we'll just that day we'll ring all the Salvation Army bells in Fargo. And Bismarck kind of grabbed it, and the leadership in Bismarck said, we'll do it too. So it was really a Bismarck Fargo the first year they rang bells. And um, we bragged about it at a national deal, and now there are 28 states uh, in the National Association of Realtors who do Realtor Ring Day. And I think that number's going, I haven't heard, but I think that number's gone up this year by two or three. So this little idea that was done over uh, coffee and other beverages Talking about what can we do is now 28 states we're all large. It will raise over a quarter of a million dollars for the Salvation Army on Real to Ring Day. And it's always the first Friday. So December 4th, right? Mm -hmm. December yep. 4th, folks, if you're out and you see these people freezing, uh, <laughs> ringing their bells, uh, just remember that there are realtors who are doing this and that most of them have found someone to sponsor it with them. And so your donation on that day is almost guaranteed to be doubled from what you give so that's a cool thing and we're kind of proud of that we do a lot of other stuff though there um trisha i'm going to ask you about a and we're not going to even mention agencies we're not going to say mm -hmm. who's doing what but we are aware of some things that are happening in bismarck that other that agencies do so you want to talk about one you're aware of yeah that uh you know the great thing about being a part of the realtor association is and just being a realtor in general is you're in contact constantly with the public and you get to hear their stories you get to experience a lot of what they're experiencing and it has led this as a group to just become involved in different organizations and different charities so it is you know there's 
two agencies last year uh, took on a competition and competed to see who could bring in the most food. And over 14,000 pounds of food was brought in in one day um, for the, the um, it was a food drive for the food pantries and it filled them <laughs> to overwhelming. <laughs> and they were overwhelmed. It was a really uh, cool event. Um, their age, um, Agencies are involved in the ALS walk, the buddy walk, the raising money for the Universal Playground in Mandan, um, helping raise funds for Pride Manchester House. So there's a lot of things that the realtors are involved with in different agencies that are on an association level, but they continue it in, within their agency. And that's not to talk about individual agents and, and what they do, um, where they go, uh, churches, you know, all that stuff. So we're out there and we appreciate the fact that we are in a community, that we make our living in a community. And so we are more than happy to give back to the community. Plus, you know, we're not, there's so many other things that we can talk about here. Um, let's just go back to Realtor Ring Day just a little bit. Um, and Amy, I know you've been involved in that up to your eyebrows again. And uh, I've, I, I know that we've both frostbitten toes on certain days. Yes, <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, December 4th has never been a nice weather day. <laughs> it's actually predictable. Yeah. <laughs> they don't do Salvation Army Realtor or Ring Day in October. We should talk to them about that, Greg. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Several, several years ago, uh, when we first started this, I took a young new loan officer with me. And we went out there and I said, it's a real to ring day. We're going to be outside. We're going to be ringing a bell. We're going to be raising money. And you and I are going to commit to doubling what we raise. And he said, okay, we'll do that. And he showed up in a light jacket and a sweater and uh, regular pants and, and these shoes. And his shoes had those fake soles, you know, not leather or not rubber, the hard plastic ones. And we were standing there at the South Walmart, ringing the bell, and he's doing this, he's shaking up and down, and all of a sudden he turned to talk and he stepped right out of his shoes. They had frozen down <laughs> to the parking lot. <laughs> <Lesson learned. laughs> and he stayed, and he's been doing it every every year since. So he's a, yeah. he's a little bit more prepared. The picture I saw last year was in full uh, yeah, he's coveralls. Yeah, yeah, it was full coveralls. It was it was good. And to that, you know, we talk a little. We've talked and mentioned our affiliates, the lenders, the title companies, home inspectors. I mean, there's so many people that were that get involved in this. Yep. So when it, we're talking realtors, just a huge thank you to all of our affiliates because they are a huge part of our association. So, folks, we think it's a great industry and it's a great uh, local location to be in it. Thank you, Bismarck Mandan, for all of that. That wraps us up for this segment. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you again. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.